OK, so here's a diagram of the enthesis. Uh, two different diagrams here. This is a simple, uh, sort of a simple tendon attachment here. OK, so for example, let's say a tendon in your shoulder attaching to the bone in your shoulder here. So here's the tendon attaches to the bone. And then you've got the little bursa right here. Right? So this whole zone right here, that's the enthesis, all right? tendon and bursal attachment to the bone. This is a more complex uh, joint, so like a knee joint or a finger joint or something like that, where you've got the actual joint right here. You've got one bone here. You've got the other bone right there. You've got the cartilage. You've got the synovium. You've got the joint capsule. The, the, a lot of times you have a burst in there as well. So it's a little bit more complex structure here, but it's similar in that you've just basically got this attachment to the bone of all these different structures. So the enthesis can become actually a pretty complex uh, area. You've got nerves that are innervating that whole region pressure-sensing nerves, pain-sensing nerves, et cetera. When you're talking about enthesopathies, now that you kind of have this, this slightly different concept of an enthesis as opposed to just a simple tendon or a simple ligament or whatever, so where the heck do you find these so-called enthesopathies? Well, a lot of common injuries here, right? Rotator cuff, a lot of people have heard of that. Tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, uh, jumper's knee, Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis. So a lot of these things are the most common injuries that people deal with in terms of musculoskeletal stuff. And you know, we see this stuff every day. Uh, within the back, there are specific ligament and tendon injuries. In, in this case, it's sort of the low back and hip area. Uh, here's a little diagram that shows someone hurting their low back with improper lifting technique. And you're getting a sprain of that iliolumbar ligament, which is kind of you know, in, in, uh, in this area right here. So that is an enthesopathy in the low back area due to a sprained ligament that can potentially be treated and healed with these regenerative injection therapies. This is another example, another diagram of this low back and hip area. So here's your low back, your lumbar spine coming down here. Here's half of the pelvis. Here's the bottom of your spine with the sacrum. Here's your coccyx or tailbone way down here. You see all this gray stuff? That's all ligament. Right, look at how many ligaments are in that low back area. It's, it's like a huge attachment site of ligaments. And the areas that aren't covered by ligament, well, looky here. They're, they, they're covered by tendon attachments. So this red zone here, these blue zones here, all this stuff, these are the tendon attachments for these various muscles as demonstrated here. So the low back and pelvic area is just one huge attachment site for ligaments and tendons. So lots of areas that can get injured. All right? How many people in here have had back pain? I've had back pain, all right, so a lot of folks. Yeah, so at some point in someone's life, 70%, at least 70% of people will ha develop back pain at some point in their life, right? So we all have experienced something in this area. And to, the, the thing about conventional medicine is that they are superb at identifying pain coming from nerves, discs, and um, the joints in the low back area. And so if, you have, if your pain is actually coming from one of those structures, you know what? If you see some of these back specialists, they can take care of you right, no problem, right? The problem is, look at all this other stuff that can cause pain. All these ligaments, all these tendons, all the muscles and stuff like that. And so if you have an injury of those areas, and at least from the statistics, 30 to 50% are ligament and tendon injuries, well, you know, conventional medicine is not so great at knowing how to treat this stuff. So if your back pain is coming from something like this, well, you know, you might not want to get that epidural because that epidural, which is really good at taking care of nerve pain, taking care of disc pain, or your pain's not coming from either of those structures, it's not going to help much. Or if it does help, it'll help for like two days or maybe a week or something like that, and your pain's going to come right back because it's being caused by something else. And the trick is to figure out what that something else is so that you can really effectively treat it. You know, treatment is not that difficult. The diagnosis, that's the challenging part. If you make the right diagnosis, then the treatment comes much, e much more easily. All right, so let's think about this tendon and ligament dysfunction. All right, so I'm going to go over some history. So you know, those of us who have had injuries or pain in different areas, you can kind of think to yourself, OK, have I had any of these things? All right? So obviously trauma, OK, motor vehicle accidents, whiplash injuries, falls, anything that's going to cause like a, that sprain or strain injury. All right? If you have pain when you first wake up, or if it happens after physical activity, that is more common of these tendinopathies. Now, I had knee tendinopathy pretty badly when I was in high school from running. And so pretty much every morning when I woke up, my knees were kind of sore right along that patellar tendon area. And then um, when I was running, the first mile or so, a lot of pain, and then the pain went away. And I felt great for the next five miles, right? Then I stopped, my, I finished my activity, and then about 10 minutes, 20 minutes in, after I finished working out, then the pain started setting in. And the next thing you know, I'm icing my knees down for the next hour. So that's very classic of tendon-related pain. Uh, if you get manual therapy, such as physical therapy, osteopathic manipulation, chiropractic, one of two things happens. Either 
the improve it does help you with your pain, but it doesn't hold, or it actually makes your pain worse. Okay, well, why is that? Let's say you've got this. Hopefully, I can kind of. You know, let's see if I can do this. Let's say you have a joint structure, all right, here, and that joint is out of alignment. Okay, well, if that joint is out of alignment and it's got these ligaments and tendons that are supporting that joint, yes, you can get that joint back into alignment through these manual therapies. But the problem is that, that those ligaments and tendons do not have the integrity to keep your joint in alignment. It's just going to fall out of alignment again. And that's why the improvement will only last for a few days. Now, if the injury is significant, that joint can never really get back into alignment because those ligaments are just loosey-goosey all over the place. And so that's what happens when the, the pain, when the manipulation actually makes your pain worse. Another thing is hypermobility. We're going to spend a little time uh, talking about this. I'm going to have everybody kind of get up and test yourselves a little bit. But people talk about how you know, being flexible is great, right? Yeah, let's do some yoga. Let's stretch. Let's do that and this. If you're not flexible enough, yes, that's a problem. It can lead to increased chance of muscular injuries and tears. But being too flexible can also be quite a problem. Because if you're too flexible, what happens is as forces go through your body, the normal amount of muscle tension that helps to absorb those forces, well, you don't have that, that buffer anymore. So all the force goes into your joint, goes in your ligaments, goes in your tendons, and you can tweak those ligaments and tendons and joints much more easily. Well, not much more, but more easily if you're too flexible. And then you have this thing called pseudo-ridiculous symptoms. Say that three times fast. Basically, you can have referred pain, right? You've, let's say you've got neck pain that goes down the arm, you've got low back pain that goes down the leg. The knee-jerk reflex is for doctors to say, oh, that's a nerve problem. You have a pinched nerve in your neck, you have a pinched nerve in your leg, and that's what's causing the pain going down your arm or leg. Well, what's interesting is that Probably actually the majority of referred pain going down the arm and leg is not coming from a nerve. It's coming from these other structures such as joints, ligaments, and tendons. And that's known as, so radicular pain, radicular symptoms, that by definition means pain from a pinched nerve. Okay, radiculopathy is Latin or something for nerve root, all right? So radiculopathy equals pinched nerve. Pseudo-radicular means, you know, fake radiculopathy, right? So it's referred pain that mimics the pain from a pinched nerve, but is not coming from a nerve. It's coming from something else.